We've done a lot of stories about anniversaries, but usually it's about something that happened 50 or 100 years ago. Patrick Murphy's story tonight is about something that happened 10 years ago. Maybe a little early to call it historic, but a lot of people are saying that this is already having an impact on St. Louis and the world. For the past 10 years, the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center has been conducting research on how plants can alleviate world hunger, fight disease, and improve the quality of human life. We are long-term optimists about the future of mankind, about the future of the, the Earth, the globe, knowing that there are challenges, but we also are confident that the uh, intellectual pursuits chemists are involved in, that physicists are involved in, will all come together to, uh, to ensure that, that we do things right in the future. One important project focuses on a tropical plant called the cassava, the major food crop of Africa. Every day, 800 million people on Earth rely upon the root of the cassava for sustenance. It grows all year, is simple to cultivate, drought resistant, and can be prepared in a number of ways for meals. But it has some serious drawbacks, which scientists here are working to eliminate. Cassava's roots are very full of, um, of starch, meaning um, energy, but they don't have um, proteins, they don't have vitamin A in particular, and they don't have what we call zinc and iron, what this is what we call micronutrient. All these elements are extremely important for human um, health. Another problem is its susceptibility to disease. This leaves here are, are virus-free and they look like a, a, a virus-free plant and this is what we would like to see all cassava looking like in Africa, looking like plants like this. And on the opposite, you can look at, at this particular plant here. On there. The, the leaves are small, they are very narrow, they are yellowish, the, the, what we call the nodes are short, etc. And this plant will be dwarfed compared to a plant like this. So the, the, the role um, of this study is really to investigate in detail, in molecular detail, the makeup of the population of these viruses in order to understand and investigate the possibility to block them. The process of developing a new and improved cassava plant has taken years, evolving with new discoveries in the field of biogenetic technology and creation of a process in which DNA with desired characteristics is integrated into the genome of a plant intended for improvement. We start with cuttings from a plant, very much the way you would do cuttings in your own home to make several plants, and we can produce plants from those cuttings. Then we take leaf lobes, which are unexpanded tiny leaves, and from these we produce a certain kind of cell which is capable of producing a whole new plant. These cells then we, through a complex process, we can get genes into these cells genes that we're interested in doing research on in our laboratory and from these new cells we can produce a whole new plant. This plant is now an improved plant with the traits that we have put in and now we end up with a plant very much like we started with. However, now this one has an improved trait and this is what we're doing in the lab. We teach the plant, we inoculate the plant, so then when the virus is coming, this, this sequence of DNA is already known by the plant and the plant has, has more time, is prepared to control these viruses better. And if you do this job uh, very well, then the, the winner will be the plant. The next step is to grow the plants they hope are improved in the greenhouses, where they are injected with viruses to see if they get sick. The success rate for making the cassava more nutritious is high. But inoculating plants against viruses is a much more difficult and gradual process because viruses are so complex. The question is, is this particular plant virus resistant? Unfortunately, this technology is not 100% uh, efficient. If we, we make about 1,600 different plants per year, and last year in 2007 we have selected less than 25 plants that are highly resistant to the viruses that we are um, checking uh, for. So it's a long road from scientific discovery in a laboratory to practical applications of those discoveries. It could be another seven years of research and experimentation before Africa benefits widely from this more nutritious virus resistant source of food. So we are not done yet. We still have to you know, improve our technology. We still have to 
transfer of these technologies to Africa. I'm very happy uh, because uh, we have made, it has been a long road, very slow uh, process, but now we see things uh, speeding up. Meanwhile, the Danforth Plant Science Center continues to work on other projects, exploring plants' potential to resist pests, remove pollutants from soil, prevent human sickness, provide biofuels, and offer raw materials for industry. Goals consistent with the center's mission to improve the human condition.